serial killers, rapists, child molesters, if these people were to confess Christ on their deathbed, would they get to heaven? We're going to talk about this controversial topic today on the Building Bridges podcast coming up. Hey, everybody. I am Josh Martin. I hope that you're having a good day. If you're watching us on YouTube, I hope that you'll hit the subscribe button, click the notification bells. Uh, we're going to talk about something today. I think it's pertinent when it comes to witnessing to people. That is, what does it entail to be saved? What does salvation even mean? And we are so um, caught up and fascinated with people like serial killers, people who commit these heinous crimes, these terrible atrocities that we cannot fathom a human is capable of doing. But the question is, if these people do these terrible things, they have remorse at the end of their life and they accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, maybe before they're executed or if they die of old age or maybe they're stabbed in prison and they're crying out to God as they're dying. Will these people be saved? I think this question is important because we need to have an understanding of what salvation is. As it says in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, it alludes to the fact that salvation is by grace. It's a gift from God, not of works, so that no one can boast. So what this means is we are saved not because we offer something on our behalf and God accepts it. We are saved because God took the initiative sending Jesus Christ to die for our sins. As it says in Romans 5.1, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ. So the question is, what if you've not had a life of fruit? What if you've been this evil, terrible human being and you ask to be saved? Is there grace for those people? Well, the answer, whether you like it or not, is yes. Think about the thieves on the cross. Jesus didn't deserve to die, but yet he was dying. The thieves deserved their punishment, and they asked God, what about us? And he said, today you'll be with me in paradise. I find that very interesting. One other thing that I think about is the, uh, the parable of workers. And in the parable, Jesus is talking about that the king sent his servants out to find people to do the work. Well, some people volunteered immediately and they worked all day long. But throughout the day, the servants began to recruit other people. And at the end of the day, the people who worked the longest thought, I'll get paid way more than the people who've worked just a few moments, a few hours. But yet they were all paid the same. The people who worked longer were upset with the fact they weren't paid the same. And then the implication is the servants say, well, didn't you agree to work for this wage? Are you upset that I'm generous with these other people? I think this alludes to salvation. I think this alludes to the fact that our works are nothing. As it says, our, our righteousness is like filthy rags. And what that means is we can offer nothing as penance for our sins. As we find in Genesis chapter 3, the world becomes cursed through the decisions of Adam and Eve. That because they ate the forbidden fruit, sin entered the earth. The earth became cursed, and it would remain cursed until Revelation, when the world is ended. There's a new heaven and earth. The earth is burned up, and the new kingdom of heaven is established. As the psalmist alludes to, we are born with a sinful nature. It's embedded in us. What people fail to realize is it's not specific sins that separate you from God. It's the fact you have sin in you that separates you from God. Now, I'm not one of those people that thinks a sin is a sin. I think if your wife, girlfriend asked if they look good after a haircut and you say, yeah, it looks great, but you don't think that and you go out and slaughter an entire village, those are two different sins. One was a white lie, but one is a terrible atrocity. And we tend to elevate all sins are equal. It's not what we do that separates us from with God. It's who we are. We are sinful beings. 
Because sin is in us, we're compelled to do things we know are wrong, but oh, so it feels so right. And we act upon it or we think about acting upon it all the time. This is what makes us sinful people. Because of that, in the Old Testament, they had to kill and slaughter animals because blood was required for forgiveness of sins. Ultimately, Jesus came to die for our sins so that we can be righteous with God through a final offering. So if you think there's a sin bad enough that you cannot be saved, then what you're essentially doing is you're saying that salvation is based upon works. And I know you're saying, yeah, but I've lived a good life. What about someone like Dahmer who eats people and who's mutilated people, a terrible human being that's committed all kinds of evil? Are you saying that me living a good life, being a good person, giving to my church, being involved, being a good parent, being a good functioning, mature adult for the Lord, that someone like that could be in heaven with me? And the answer is yes, because it's not our actions that separate us from God. It's our sinful nature that separates us from God. And if we ask God for forgiveness, he forgives everything except blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, which is the rejection of God to begin with. So our human nature, we like to think about justice. We like to think about good and bad and weighing the validity of a person based upon how they act. That's human nature, but that's not God. God's system is a system of redemption. And often we're like Jonah. We're upset at God's redemption. Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh because he knew God was merciful. He wanted Nineveh to suffer. He didn't want to go convey the message of salvation to these people. He was bitter about it. He was angry that God was merciful. And I think we're the same way. We look at the world. We think that Our actions are purer and better than certain people, so therefore we have better acceptance from God. God creates all people. He loves all people. And no matter what someone has done, no matter how dark, deep, tainted, uh, terrible, atrocious, all sins can be forgiven through the blood of Jesus Christ. So we have to make sure that we understand that God forgives all sins, no matter if we like it or not. You guys have a blessed day.